Carroll Shelby ignited the muscle car wars with the introduction of the GT350 in 1965. From that moment until production stopped in 1970, Shelby GT350s and GT500s ruled the road. Shelby American's constant experimentation, its willingness to push the envelope, was critical to its success. The Shelby team tried new technologies and innovations to go faster. A few of those projects, like the 68 GT500 Green Hornet and the 67 Shelby GT500 dubbed Little Red, became legendary. Shelby's got a long history of experimental cars from the very beginning. CSX 2000 was, in fact, an experimental car. Progressed through the ages, the first of the GT350s was an R. It was an experimental car. They had a little red, they played around with supercharging and so forth on the big block, uh, the Green Hornet, independent rear suspension, fuel injection, kind of state-of-the-art kind of things for back in that time. Twin Paxton supercharged Cobra. That was kind of a, a two-off car. Actually, they made two, one for Bill Cosby and one for Carroll, and those ended up uh, privately or wrecked. Whatever happened to these cars, right? What happens to them? Well, um, some of them were crushed and some of them were in private collections. And the car we have behind me is a 70 GT350. But there was one experiment that Shelby never had the chance to finish. One idea that he wanted to pursue, but never got around to. Paxton is a name that has always been synonymous with horsepower and power in the 1960s with Carroll Shelby. Some of the very early 1965 and 66 Shelby Mustangs were actually Paxton powered at the factory. It was another great Shelby idea on the back burner until last year. That's when Carroll contacted Stephen Becker, one of the world's foremost experts on Shelby cars, to talk about finishing that supercharged GT350 project. Carroll wanted to use an authentic Shelby car, but he didn't have a suitable car in his collection. So Stephen searched for a good base car to begin the project. The initial idea was to use a coupe, but instead, he found a stunning 1970 convertible. The GT350 was one of the most original cars that Stephen had ever seen. And with the high rear end ratio and heavy duty suspension, the Shelby could easily handle the blower. This 70 GT350 is a really special car because even before Carroll did it backwards, uh, this one was privately owned for up until recently, the whole time. A one of one GT350 convertible in this color combination with that interior four speed air car. Once Stephen found the GT350, Carroll Shelby immediately bought it. It was titled to Carroll, making it a unique piece of automotive history. After he acquired this car, a really special car to begin with, he got the idea, well, maybe we should supercharge that one. So this one's got a period correct 60s style Paxton uh, supercharger on it. Finding the car turned out to be the easiest part of the equation. Now, Stephen had to locate a complete NOS Paxton kit and have it installed while resisting the urge to update the GT350 with modern electronics and equipment. Scouring his extensive database of Shelby suppliers and sources for parts, Stephen located the majority of the components. He even found an original supercharger unit that had been rebuilt at Paxton to factory specs. It was engineered to look just like it would have in 1969. When I went back and did the Paxton installation, there really wasn't any brackets because nobody ever made any. So those were hand fabricated much the way that an experimental car is done today or even in the 60s. So, but it looks very period correct. It looks just like, you know, the pulleys in the installation, like I've seen on the big block, Paxton supercharged cars. This small block looks like that, like the 66 350 Paxton supercharged cars, but in this case, on a 70 body style. The final result, is spectacular. Working with Carroll, working with his team at Shelby American in Las Vegas, working with his designers and his staff to take his personal 1970 GT350 convertible, factory four-speed, factory air, original unrestored, bolt a 1960s era NOS Paxton supercharger to it and set it up prototypical form the way that they would have done in 1969 or 1970 was really an exciting job and a great accomplishment on behalf of myself and my team. Carroll's GT350 has great acceleration, even with the high gears. It feels like a big block, but handles like a small block. And when you pop the hood, the Paxton looks fantastic. Big block type power on a small block. 
car that's very easy, user-friendly, very drivable, maybe a car that should have been done back then. And Carol Shelby loves the car too. This car is Carol's personal car. This belongs to him, it's titled to him, and he drives the car on occasion. Like the other experimental Shelby cars, this will go down in history as a great idea that should have been. This is the car that Ford should have built. This is the car that Carroll Shelby would have built. This is the car that Carroll Shelby did build. Fortunately, for serious collectors and enthusiasts, Carroll's 70 supercharged GT350 won't be crushed like Little Red or lost for years like the Green Hornet was. It's a rare piece of Carroll's legacy that will exist forever. Carroll's car is a genuine experimental prototype 1970 GT350 convertible. Like the other cars of the past that Carroll had, the 67 Super Snake, the 67 Little Red Convertible and Coupe, the 68 Green Hornet. This car behind us won't be crushed after it's been used and driven by Carroll. No, this is in his personal collection. It's been documented with the Shelby Registry. It's been documented with Team Shelby. It has been handled by Carroll himself. And this car will go down in history with the other half a dozen or so prototype Shelby Cobra Mustang automobiles of which one or two only exist today. The car behind me is the realization of Carol Shelby's personal dream. It's the car that never was but is today.